by a show of hands, does anyone, does anyone in the room remember when cell phones first became mainstream in the late 90s, early 2000s? Yes? Well, I remember when having a flip phone like this, with a selfie as your background, a cool Rihanna ringback tone, a corny text signature, and a joke on your voicemail will get you mad brownie points with your friends in middle school. For the millennials in the room, like myself, cell phones became a huge part of our childhood and adolescent years. So, is it a coincidence that around 63% of mobile app developers are under 35 years old? I don't think so. We grew up with cellular devices, spending years learning about their capabilities and functionality, only to grow into the adults that would reinvent and revolutionize what was initially designed to be a simple communication device. Even the cell phones continue to make great leaps and strides. There is another revolution happening right before our very eyes. Social robots. If you think about it, robots, in a mechanical sense, have been around for a very long time. The term robot was first introduced in a 1921 play about a factory that built artificial people to be servants for humans. Today, the term robot has become more broad, but is generally referenced as a programmable machine that can perform certain tasks automatically. Your car may have been put together by a robot. The vegetables you had for lunch may have been harvested by one. If you're like me, the floors of your home may have even been vacuumed by one. But social robots are special in that they are designed to interact and communicate directly with humans, following our social rules. By design, they adapt to changing environments and are not limited to single tasks as the traditional assembling and vacuuming robots are. Is anyone familiar with the popular cartoon show, The Jetsons? Yes? The Jetsons, which first aired in the 60s, was about a family living in a futuristic world that featured a personal household robot, Rosie. If you remember Rosie, what made her unique was that she could communicate with the humans and do multiple household chores. She was more than just a robot. She was a member of the family. There was even an episode that I absolutely loved where Rosie got a boyfriend. <laughs> and I bring Rosie up because Rosie the Robot is a great visualization of what I mean by a social robot. But household applications are just one arena of where social robots have potential. A social robot could also greet you at the mall or supermarket and proceed to show you around the store if you're looking for something very particular. They could assist teachers in schools and nurses in hospitals. These are just a few of the many tasks that scientists and researchers from around the world are currently developing social robots to do. And contrary to what movies and the media may lead you to believe, these robots are actually being designed to empower humanity and not to destroy it. To provide a few real world examples, on a global scale, these robots are being programmed to enhance learning for children, to assist the elderly in their homes, and even to make rehabilitation more engaging for people with motor and cognitive impairments. Just here at Georgia Tech, you can go in one lab to hold an entire conversation with Simon, go in another to plan your perfect musical playlist with Shimmy, and even stop by my lab to get some exercise in with my robot friends, Now and Pepper. In my own PhD research, I study the design, development, and evaluation of these robotic systems intended to interact with humans. In one of my projects, we use an interactive robot to provide feedback and encouragement to children as they complete therapy exercises. This particular system was designed for children with cerebral palsy in the hopes of enhancing their rehabilitative experiences. In a prior project, a social robot was also used to tutor middle school children in multiplication by adapting to their specific needs. So I have seen a robot act as a tutor, a therapist, and an encourager for children. 
through these various experiences, what I have found is that children are just as intrigued and excited by these robots as we, the millennials, once were about cell phones. We may be the generation that sees the development and early integration of these robots into society, but the children of today will be the ones who grow up with these new social machines in the world. If we desire to see the same level of creative leaps and bounds that we have seen in the last two decades caused by the mobile device, we must provide children with the same levels of interaction with these robots in the real world. But how can we do that? Well, it really starts with all of us. There are already social robots on the market available at this very moment. In the next 20, 10 to 20 years, there will be even more. Yet, studies show that Americans are reluctant to incorporate these types of technologies into their own lives. And I get it. They're, they're new, unfamiliar. And the movies don't really help. I've watched The Terminator, Robocop, Westworld, iRobot, you name it. I admit, they're, they're kind of scary. But do you know what else was scary once upon a time? Airplanes, televisions, the year 2000, <laughs> light bulbs, even telephones. Think about that for a second. The same airplanes that make over 100,000 flights a day, the same televisions that are currently in over 100 million homes around the world, the same year 2000 that came and went like 18 years ago, <laughs> the same light bulbs that are allowing you to see me on this stage right now, the same telephones that you and I grew up with, were once the strangest and sometimes scariest things that the world had ever seen. But humanity gave those things a chance. And because of those chances, humans have become more efficient, the world has become a seemingly smaller place, and our average quality of life has greatly improved. At the very least, we owe it to the next generation to give this new technological revolution, social robots, that same chance to better our world. So we must start by changing our own perspectives. The world didn't lose its hesitance towards telephones overnight. Change is scary. It took a process of openness, exposure, and learning. I know that the cinema is persuasive, but so is the work being done in human-robot interaction around the world to make everyday tasks easier, less dangerous, and more enjoyable for humans. There are even roboticists out there, like me, working to make sure that we keep the human interest first, always. Once we adjust our own perspectives on robots in the world, we can then begin to equip the next generation with the wings that they need to soar. Children are our greatest resource and should therefore be our biggest investment. Exposing them to these robots at an early age prepares them for their future, whether that future includes a career in technology or not. So if you have children, younger brothers or sisters, nieces or nephews, little cousins, 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 play cousins, they need you. For their next birthday or holiday gift, get them a robot. Watch them use it. Ask them what it does well. Let them think about what it could do better. Let them break it, and then make them put it back together. <laughs> when they ask questions, help them find answers. And through this process, we will foster bridges between our generations, paying forward our curiosities and understandings instead of our fears, just like the generations before us. So I challenge you to join me as we work to ensure that children are not only open and exposed to a world embedded with social robots, but also prepared to contribute to it. And maybe one day, when we finally have the robot guides at the mall and our own personal Rosies in our homes, the world will be grateful that we finally decided to give social robots a fair chance. And the children of today 
can pay it forward to the children of tomorrow with whatever great technological advancement that may come next, continuing our great human tradition. Thank you. <laughs>